Hello all. Uh, once again, welcome you all for this session, performance of sport. Let us uh, quickly go through the agenda for uh, today. Abdul, actually, okay. today we'll be talking about uh, the importance of performance testing. And uh, how this performance testing plays a major role in today's uh, software delivery. And uh, we will be talking about uh, the important things which we will be measuring as part of uh, performance testing. And uh, we will also see the important tools, in, uh, the most widely used tools available in the market, uh, and uh, followed by the benefits of uh, having performance as a score with a demo. So before we move on, uh, uh, I will like to talk about the performance testing first. So performance testing is a type of testing which we do to measure the system's performance based on uh, uh, speed and uh, stability with varying workloads. So why performance testing is really important in today's world? As you can see, uh, nearly half of the users uh, who are using web-based applications or mobile-based applications, they expect the page to be, or the, or the application to be loaded within a few seconds. Uh, we have this mindset, if, uh, even if you are trying for any search in uh, Google or uh, any web pages, if it is taking more, more time to respond, you will just open another tab and uh, we used to prefer uh, uh, doing the search in another uh, website, which gives the faster uh, responses. So that is our mindset today. Uh, that much of uh, uh, response time we, we are uh, we are uh, recovering uh, today. And if you consider uh, e-commerce based application, even uh, the small amount of uh, downtime which uh, leads to a huge uh, revenue impact, and it will also create bad, bad reputation for the customers as well. We will try to uh, interrelate these. Uh, Things with the real incident which happened. Uh, we all know Avengers uh, in game movie. When the movie uh, was planned, uh, uh, it was, uh, it was uh, there are two providers, Fandango and uh, Book Nation. The, these are the ticket selling websites. Uh, they used to sell the tickets in their uh, online platform. What happened is, uh, due to the heavy traffic, uh, the users are not able to book their tickets. Some of them are experiencing poor response time due to that uh, their payment was partially done and uh, they're not able to do their uh, ticket in, in a seamless way. The other uh, and another incident is uh, we all use Amazon uh, for our online shopping. So Prime Day is one of the uh, day where uh, they used to give discounts on it. On that particular day, we used to uh, they used to receive uh, heavy traffic in their uh, servers. Uh, within 15 minutes of the sale, there was a huge traffic in their uh, servers, and their servers are in, not enough uh, capable to serve the load. Since uh, this is e-commerce e e uh, e based application, uh, even small uh, downtime would uh, leads to huge impact in uh, revenue. One more, one more incident, uh, Glastonbury. So Glastonbury, uh, am I audible now? Yeah, for okay. us it looks uh, good, Ram. Uh, maybe we'll see if, uh, uh, if we still get it, we'll see if we can improve the audio. Yeah. Okay. So another example would be Glastonbury. Glastonbury is a UK based uh, uh, musical, uh, uh, company, they used to uh, conduct musical festivals in uh, summer season. So there will be a, a huge uh, number of uh, audience for this event. And uh, Glastonbury, they are selling their tickets in uh, uh, web, their web application. So what happened in uh, 2016 is uh, they haven't uh, done performance testing in a better way. So uh, all the users are facing a poor response time and a poor page load. And due to, the, due to this, uh, they are not able to book their tickets for the events. And uh, they started expressing their uh, views in social medias. 
so as, as a resolution uh, glass and very uh, what they have did is they simulated the traffic what they will be expecting uh, in the future before they are going live so they are able to uh, tune their system and uh, able to serve better for the users so these are all the important um, uh, few incidents which happened if you are uh, really interested uh, to know the, uh, the other incidents and groups which happened in real you can uh, go through this link and uh, we all learn from mistakes right uh, you can have this uh, you can uh, see now we know the importance of performance sustain uh, how actually this will play a major role in uh, today software delivery so in uh, today's uh, software delivery uh, we will talk about we will try to understand how we are delivering uh, how our software delivery model is planned uh, nowadays this is uh, uh, martin fowler uh, from his own words uh, during our older days uh, for a typical software delivery that, that will be in terms of months so we used to deliver uh, software uh, uh, the important features in uh, that the time lapse will be in months but nowadays if you see uh, we are uh, cutting those uh, time in months to minutes so what the idea is uh, we deliver more quickly and uh, by doing that we actually uh, increasing the return on investment which we are uh, which, uh, which we are putting on that particular feature so what happens is that uh, it gives us a faster feedback for further development as well with uh, practices like agile ca and uh, devops uh, we deliver uh, new features very often to our customers so the, the key takeaway here is uh, we are delivering at a faster pace the question here is uh, are we de- are we doing uh, performance testing for every release there are uh, some myths and reason uh, behind it some of the reasons and myths are uh, our product is not at ready so we, let us do the uh, performance testing at, at the end of the life cycle this this is one of the common myth uh, we have in our mind the other uh, reasons would be time constraints and infrastructure costs so i don't have time uh, let us uh, plan it later and uh, infrastructure costs why i need to uh, simulate another production kind of environment to to run my performance so these are all the uh, uh, reasons and myths uh, which we are uh, having in mind uh, that that leads to uh, that leads to not running performances often in our uh, uh, software delivery practices so this will lead to a ripple impact in uh, future the impact will be in both sides from business side as well as from our uh, software delivery team as well in business side uh, the customer will uh, will lose their uh, revenue due to the poor performance of their site and it will create a negative effect on their brand as well as a software delivery team let us say some incident happened uh, in the production some uh, website crashes happened uh, we don't have any clue about that uh, we need to find the root cause first so what we will be doing we will spend more time in analyzing the root cause as well uh, sometimes the fix could be code refactoring like small query tuning kind of sometimes uh, it will be a big impact as well we need to uh, do infrastructure remodeling sometimes we need to replace the, some other software component which the which uh, does uh, very well in terms of performance so to mitigate all these uh, impacts and uh, risks in future we should run performance tests more often in early stage of the product so by doing this activity uh, we can we can actually uh, reduce the impact and uh, find bottlenecks in the early stage now we know the importance of performance system and uh, uh, the impact in the process of the delivery let us know uh, what are the things which we will be measuring as part of uh, performance system so the major things as i said earlier uh, the bottlenecks the bottlenecks uh, is uh, kind of thing which degrades our uh, systems performance it can be from hardware side as well as from software side the for software side the typical example could be the hard queries which is uh, poor poor written queries which is uh, running for a long time that is one example for the software issues 
hardware issues uh, it can be like uh, uh, the servers are not even uh, we might be need to uh, scale horizontally some of the bottlenecks could be cpu utilization and memory utilization uh, the application servers might need uh, more number of cpu more uh, memory due to that uh, uh, it, it cannot be able to serve more load. the other uh, limitations like operating system limitations so the example for operating limitation would be the tcp ports if you see in linux we have around 65k tcp ports by default we will get only 100 uh sorry guys like there is a problem with this network i believe uh, hey uh ram can you hear us okay um abdul uh, do you want to take over for something uh yeah sure so yeah as uh, rama is uh, saying right uh, so it comes with uh, you know uh, identifying from the bottlenecks of like uh, whatever it is whether your uh, uh, your cpu or uh, your memory or uh, you know your network utilization stuff like that right uh, so it comes from a different perspective for each like from software side and hardware side and also your uh, uh, your operating system limitations as well like uh, uh, like how much does it support how much is it scaling how much uh, uh, you know how much it uh, consumes your memory based on your uh, you know based on its capacity and uh, the same applies for your disk usage as well uh, so uh, this are usual bottlenecks that happens uh, over in your system so um, uh, so this would be the main factor that uh, like uh, we'll be working on to uh, you know uh, to overcome and there are other factors as well from uh, you know which directly impacts your uh, uh, your application performance which is uh, you know your response time that includes like how quick uh, your application is going to respond when the user tries to uh, open your web page um, so uh, so uh, as uh, showed in the earlier stage right it should be like uh, based on that uh, recent trends uh, a user is expecting a site to load less than 2 seconds so Uh, that is one thing uh, we'll be more focused on, like how quick your application is going to be, which which includes your latency. Like uh, uh, since most of the sites are you know uh, geographically accessible, uh, so you need to be more conscious where your uh, application is hosted, how uh, how a user from a different uh, a different location is going to access your application. So uh, so uh, you need to be more conscious on your response times, uh, like uh, wherever your geographic location it is, you need to. Uh, application should be in a position to respond at least in a very minimal time uh, based on your application design and uh, you know application uh, uh, application your application's weight age uh, uh, i think ram is back uh, ram you able to hear us yes yes sir okay yeah. cool uh, uh, do you want to take over or shall i yeah so the as i said earlier uh, the operating system limitations we can found out by have, by tuning the available ports this will be you know only when we are uh, running the performance performance test by concurrently running uh, we will know we don't have enough number of ports uh, we might need to tune ports to expose load so the other things like uh, response time and throughput we will be measuring uh, response time is an end to end the time taken for a particular uh, by a server to respond to a particular user request the throughput is again measured in terms of uh, uh, the amount of transaction which we are doing uh, in a particular period of time so now we know uh, we, these are the available tools in the market uh, to do the performance testing here uh, uh, some of the tools uh, uh, are gui based tools and uh, some of the tools are uh, which supports uh, writing performance tested code so each has its own uh, advantages and its own implementations uh, i will hand over to abdul to talk more about on uh, scripting based tools and their uh, advantages thanks again uh, ram uh, so yeah uh, so uh, performance as uh, scripts right so before starting that uh, just to uh, you know research that uh, point so there are multiple uh, tools performance tools that is available like starting from jmeter loadrunner 
you know, Gatling. So there are multiple variants of tools and, uh, you know, each and everything falls, uh, falls a different approach and each and everything has its own advantage. So few of the things like as on, a, on a basic approach, it is like a uh, few of the things are categorized as uh, open source, licensed, uh, codeless, uh, scripting based tools. So uh, in this uh, in this variant of tools, uh, you know, like automation, like your automation testing, uh, based on your uh, uh, based on your application intensity and based on your application needs, will fall into different uh, types of automation tools, uh, right? So uh, uh, most times it is like uh, you'll go for a, a record record and playback based tools like Selenium IDE or uh, other tools, and uh, there are other. Uh, uh, sometimes we'll uh, follow a different approach of writing uh, your scripts to you know to organize your scripts more uh, uh, more for uh, you know upcoming releases uh, like uh, Selenium or uh, you know TestFA or uh, Puppeteer. So there are a lot of tools that follow different languages. So like this, uh, uh, like this, you can uh, you can uh, select your application, select your performance tools based on your. Uh, application needs so in that uh, in that uh, the overall approach we are trying to focus is uh, to uh, you know left shift your application uh, your performance testing to very early stage of your sdlc so uh, from in that uh, in that scenario we are uh, trying to see uh, why to keep a performance test as a very isolated uh, kind of uh, isolated kind of environment so if it is uh, rather in a code like your automation or uh, any other tools right it will be very easy to kick start in from the very early stage of uh, early stage of uh, your testing cycle so um, so that that is a whole uh, you know whole point we are trying to uh, see and um, you know there are tools like uh, gatling k6 locust so these are uh, scripting based tools so whereas uh, Gatling, right? Gatling is based on your uh, based on Scala, and uh, K6 is based on uh, JavaScript, uh, and uh, Locust is based on Python. So, uh, so uh, each comes with a different advantage and disadvantages. But uh, uh, you know, based on your application ecosystem, right? Your tech stack, uh, you you can uh, you, you be much closer to your uh, performance tools as well. So that is the whole approach uh, we are trying to see, uh, and. Uh, you know, just to uh, we'll move on to uh, what would be the advantages of keeping your performance test as code. So, with this, right, uh, the first thing is version control. Uh, so, it will be more version control friendly, and uh, you know, uh, you can track each and every commits how your uh, scripts were progressed uh, from a very early stage of. Uh, from a very early stage of time, and uh, you know multiple uh, multiple commits, and you can uh, peer uh, peer review your code, and uh, uh, and um, you know you can have track of each and every changes from your performance code as well. And uh, so that that is one main thing. And most of the tools are following into a repository based approach. So uh, keeping your performance test as code as well will uh, will uh, have much more adv added advantage. Um, and the next uh, point would be uh, your collaboration. So as I uh, mentioned earlier, right? Um, so when it comes to collaboration, uh, you know, uh, from my past experience, I usually uh, felt that, uh, you know, performance is kind of, is kept in a very last stage and also it is kind of a very isolated environment. Uh, you know, just only the performance uh, testing folks or performance uh, related folks will get involved in that uh, rather than, uh, you know, automation folks or now managing folks or even the developers. So uh, with, uh, uh, you know, as Ram mentioned earlier, right, with latest uh, software practices, we are trying to, you know, uh, work in a very collaborated manner and uh, uh, so for that, if you uh, a more collaborative manner, so in that your developers uh, tend to you know uh, uh, tend to follow more code like approach. So if you if you have some performance tools or uh, your uh, performance tools in your uh, similar ecosystem, right? In your software development ecosystem, like uh, if you are a JavaScript based application, you have uh, you might choose your automation tool related to that, like. Uh, uh, you know different uh, JavaScript tools. So likewise, if you if you try to uh, you know look up the advantage of uh, uh, K6, right? So that is also a JavaScript application. So that it will uh, it will sit right into your ecosystem. So that uh, you know the collaboration of uh, you know uh, of the of uh, uh, folks will be much uh, helpful. And uh, you know you can try to solve a lot of uh, issues from the early early stage of uh, uh, 
early stage and it will be like very open your performance test uh, will be much open to uh, much open and accessible to a lot of folks so that will help you uh, in reducing uh, uh, that, that will help you help you in reducing a lot of uh, uh, you know uh, debugging or uh, you know uh, solving uh, solving stuff at the very last stage of cycle so uh, that is on uh, that is on collaboration and uh, you know the next thing is uh, data creation so uh, likewise uh, you know sometimes when you are trying to load your application or test your application uh, that we might end up in uh, you know creating a huge uh, chunk of data or you you might need to load your data into your application first before triggering your load or stuff like that so in that case right uh, so in that case uh, uh, mostly we we'll go for uh, stuff like uh, plugin or shell script uh, uh, shell script whatever is convenient so with programming like approach right you can uh, you can have your separate layer of uh, data creation which will be quite uh, easier and you can you know tweak it at a very early stage of time and uh, uh, you know and also you can try to consume your developer models if your developer have some models that you can directly consume you can try to directly implement into your code uh, with uh, you know support your support of your uh, your language tools and uh, uh, or if you have a separate framework for your automation which uh, where you have uh, one separate layer for data creation you can try to consume it uh, directly into your code so uh, with that right you don't need to uh, you can reuse your uh, existing uh, existing uh, code or existing uh, uh, layers so that 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 is an additional advantage you don't need to spend a lot of lot of time in uh, setting up the data and um, the next uh, thing would be uh, integrating with CI/CD. So, obviously, uh, in recent times, most of the application are uh, you know following into a pipeline-based approach. So, each and every uh, part of your part of your code or test uh, from the starting point of time, like unit test or uh, uh, your automation, uh, uh, all the tests are followed inside uh, inside your pipelines. So. Uh, uh, with the code based approach right it will be much easier and also you don't uh, keep it as a very isolated thing uh, since uh, you know it comes as a very code based approach it will be very easy like when you are integrating your automation stuff itself you will uh, uh, it will be more closed uh, more uh, more closer to your uh, you know ecosystem right so it will be easy to integrate uh, into your cicd as well um, and uh, next thing uh, is modularization so, uh, so just to uh, you know, give a very clear uh, picture, right? Uh, like in automation, in automation, we used to have a, a framework which has uh, you know base class. Uh, you'll have different utilities to handle different uh, uh, you know different actions, and uh, you'll uh, try to reuse your code as much as possible. So likewise, if you uh, with this uh, code like approach, right, you can um, you can have a very robust uh, framework, and uh, you can reuse it as much as possible, and uh, uh, you don't need to spend a lot of time for each and every uh, release uh, every release uh, to redo the same thing so when you are trying to do it from the early early stage right you will uh, try to solve up the hurdles from early stage of uh, early stage of point and also you will try to you know uh, uh, keep it uh, real simple and uh, ready for uh, you know the next code commit uh, so that uh, you know at the end of your life cycle you don't need to uh, spend a lot of time in uh, solving your uh, uh, solving your general performance uh, issues like uh, uh, you know in script recording or uh, your uh, environment or infrastructure you don't need to spend a lot of time if you have if you have started already with a very minimal piece of code and uh, if it is already in your pipelines right so it will be very easy uh, at the end, end at the end of your life cycle so you don't need to spend a lot of time over there so, um, so this uh, so this is the overall uh, advantages. There are uh, much more uh, much more additions as well, and uh, uh, you know these are the key factors that um, uh, that drives uh, performance as as code, right? Um, so the overall uh, point we are trying to stretch in is right. Uh, uh, whether your performance or your load of the application, right? If you start from a very early stage of your uh, testing cycle, right? Uh, so for that uh, you know if you keep it uh, keep your performance tools uh, close to your ecosystem it will be very easy as well and also you can uh, solve a lot of uh, performance related issues from the early early stage in time so that you can keep track of uh, each and every uh, you know bottlenecks or uh, or uh, 
uh, bottlenecks or any other performance related and uh, you know your page weight uh, stuff like that uh, and also you can pinpoint at very point in time like uh, uh, from a particular from a particular commit if your uh, you know page weight started to uh, you know uh, increase in bytes or stuff like that you can uh, pinpoint there and saying that okay from this commit uh, your uh, your page load your page response is starting to increase so for that you can try to you know focus on that particular point in uh, particular commit and uh, try to reduce the um, you know uh, 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 try to reduce your uh, impact on that so that uh, so it helps a lot in uh, uh, you know, keeping your application very optimized and uh, 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 optimized and high performance. Yeah. So uh, these are the major uh, key points for that. So with this, right, uh, we we'll try to move on to uh, uh, move on to a particular tool uh, which follows a scripting. So for this uh, session, right, we are uh, planning to do it uh, with uh, Gatling, which is a Scala based tool. So Gatling is kind of a open source tool. It also have a licensed version as well, uh, with some additional advantage, with some additional features. Uh, but uh, in open source, it supports most of the stuff, and uh, it is in the open source community. It is in, it is in the market for last uh, couple of years, and also it has a very uh, vibrant uh, and growing uh, open source community as well. So it is um, so for for this right for Gatling right. Uh, uh, you can uh, you need to have a prerequisite of your JDK, JDK and uh, Scala and Maven, uh, and also the build tools. Right, it follows multiple uh, build tools like Maven or uh, Gradle. Uh, so there are multiple options. So for this uh, particular uh, demo, we'll try to uh, stick with Maven. Uh, so for creating a basic Gatling structure, uh, uh, basic Gatling. Uh, uh, Gatling for uh, structure, right? Uh, you can directly put in uh, uh, this command. So this will, uh, this Maven command will try to download your basic uh, Gatling uh, archetype uh, with uh, the basic files, like uh, the basic required files. Uh, so with that, uh, it will create a POM file. You can directly import that POM file into your IDEs and uh, uh, and create your start uh, creating your uh, your scenarios. So this is the basic uh, setup that is going to require. Uh, we already have, uh, you know, Gatling setup in our system. So we'll just directly uh, show you a basic uh, use case. And um, uh, before uh, moving on to, the, to that, right, I'll just give you a, give an overview of, uh, you know, script structure. Uh, so if you see that a basic uh, Gatling script uh, will have, uh, uh, this will be the basic, uh, uh, structure of Gatling. So it will have uh, like automation or like any other Maven uh, based projects, right? It will have resource where you can have uh, your bodies or your data. And uh, uh, inside Scala, uh, inside Scala, you will write your own test scripts, uh, like uh, all the Gatling related test scripts. And uh, there'll be three basic, uh, uh, basic uh, inbuilt uh, files, which is engine ID recorder. So those are uh, Gatling related files, which will help you in running the system, running the uh, they are running the Gatling scripts and also there is IDE helper, which is, uh, you know, uh, which helps in kind of like record and playback approach. Uh, if you want to record a particular, uh, uh, a particular scenario in your Chrome or uh, somewhere and you can directly import that HAR file, you can export, uh, you can export your actions uh, as a HAR file and import inside your Scala. So it will convert that into a, uh, into a, you know, uh, into a code based uh, approach. So, uh, so that is a basic structure and uh, moving on to the uh, moving on to the script, script structure right uh, so uh, Gatling uh, has a basic simulation class like each and every class should extend a simulation class which will have all the uh, all the script related uh, uh, script related file classes and functions so uh, that is a basic a basic uh, that is a basic uh, class which needs which, which needs to be extended, and uh, there is protocol configuration. So this will hold uh, what type of uh, protocol you are going to follow, and uh, what should be your base URL, and uh, you know uh, which is the endpoint you are going to hit. So stuff like that, uh, and uh, followed by that, there is your headers. So each and every HTTP request right uh, will have uh, 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 will have its own headers, like uh, what type of content it is, what. Uh, um, mm. 
you know what type of browser uh, uh, browser uh, it accepts what is the encoding what is the language uh, so uh, you know sometimes uh, you know each and every headers will have its own uh, uh, own header uh, entities and also sometimes most of the times it will be common as well so you can uh, put in as a header you can uh, you can define your header as a particular uh, function and uh, the next part is uh, your scenario uh, scenario is a is the actual function where you defined your user flow like uh, how um, how your uh, use case is going to flow if you have you know a user uh, first let's say log in into a system and then uh, uh, log in into a system and uh, once a home page loads click on some uh, click on some uh, you know do some action view some reports and then log out so stuff like that right so you can you can uh, define your exact uh, user case like uh, what is a get request uh, your uh, post request stuff like that and uh, followed by that uh, you know load definition so uh, you know in general case uh, we'll have some user uh, trend right like uh, um, suppose uh, my system will have uh, continuously 100 users will try to log in into my system and then uh, it will just keep on adding with one why with one user uh, at every point in time uh, so for one hour so my user uh, my uh, workload my user load will be like that so you can define your exact uh, you know load uh, load pattern in that setup uh, and also uh, you know if you have multiple uh, scenarios right uh, let's say there is uh, something called uh, so there is one transaction which you have uh, to find users and uh, there is another trans transaction to create user so you can uh, you know mix match your uh, load pattern and uh, use it and um, the next uh, thing is uh, okay so the next part is demo so with this right um, uh, before going on to demo we'll just uh, see we have a basic uh, crud application uh, uh, to uh, for this demo so we'll just quickly show uh, what does application do so it is a very simple and straightforward application which will have like uh, uh, which will have uh, basic actions like create update uh, get and delete so if you see this this is uh, actually the application is hosted in your local uh, local so uh, this is this is the url we are going to hit and uh, this is the body so what i do is it will try to create a player uh, um, we are keeping the entity set like a player is trying to we are trying to create a player and update a player and get uh, his uh, details and uh, delete his details so if you see this right um, so this is the basic body if you try to send it uh, it will create a create a test user with uh, you know uh, with the name age and uh, id st stuff like that and uh, and uh, followed by that you can try uh, try to get the user id so if you see this once your user is id user is created it will try to uh, generate a unique id for that particular user so for getting the details of that particular user you need to pass that uh, id to your uh, http request so once i pass this uh, it will show me the exact details test user 12 which is similar to this so now i need to update this player in the sense uh, i need to pass the id again um, in the http request uh, in the http uh, url itself and in the body right i've just made it as updated test player and i'm changing the age to 28 so i've just hit it and uh, you know it says this id is simple, uh, updated successfully so if you try to get the user details again for the same user it says updated test player and uh, in the same type you can directly delete that user okay uh, so it, it is based on uh, your status code so moving on to the demo right so uh so this is the basic uh basic gatling script uh so as i showed in the ppt right uh it will have uh, it has you know it is extending the simulation class and it has a basic qr and, and uh, uh it has a basic scenario and setup so with this right i'll just uh, and uh, as i mentioned in the ppt there is uh, there's an option to you know keep it very optimized like your automation suit so what we have done is uh, since uh, each and every class needs to extend the basic simulation class right uh, what we did is uh, we have kept uh, the basic base url and http protocol definition as a separate class and uh, 
you know variables uh, the headers everything as a separate uh, class and we have extended for each and every uh, every actions so that uh, you know like in automation we used to have base class where uh, all the basic uh, uh, basic definitions are uh, defined right where we can reuse it for each and every uh, uh, every extending classes so like the likewise uh, you can do the same thing for your performance code as well and uh, yeah uh, if you see this uh, so for this uh, demo right um, uh, we have a basic uh, user journey based on that cred application so uh, in that uh, we are going to create a user and uh, get the details of that user and edit that user and uh, you know delete that user so this is a basic journey that is defined and uh, with that right we are trying to uh, you know we are trying to see that um, you know the response time should be less than one second for each and every transaction. Like let's say whatever it is, create or view or edit or delete, uh, your HTTP request should uh, respond within less than one second. Uh, less than not less than one second, but uh, should not be more than one second. And uh, uh, you know, and it should it should it should be in a, uh, in the position to handle thirty users simultaneously for thirty seconds. So. Uh, so for uh, demo purpose, like we have kept it as a very minimal, very uh, unrealistic uh, situation. But uh, you know, when it comes to a realistic application, uh, your load might be different. Your, uh, um, your you know your response times and your user load and uh, the duration might be entirely different. Um, so uh, for this particular scenario, we need to have particular performance goals. So the performance goals is something like uh, the problem we discussed in the earlier uh, slides, right? Uh, like your response, uh, your your response time should be uh, uh, should be less than once again. Whether uh, it is a different geographical or whatever it is, based on the uh, definition or uh, or your initial uh, setup, right? Uh, you might have come into conclusion saying that okay, your response, your page should be responding in less than uh, this many seconds. Whether it is accessed from a different geographical or uh, or from the same uh, location. So uh, here for this, uh, we have mentioned as response should should be less than once again. And uh, the next thing is your error rate. So as a whole, as a whole test, right? As a performance test, once it is uh, once it is completed, once once your performance is uh, running up, uh, there shouldn't be errors when it is loaded up with you know thirty users or fifty users uh, based on the user load. So if uh, so, the error rate should be very less, very less. Um, so here we have mentioned as uh, the error rate should be less than zero point one percent each. Uh, so uh, you know uh, if you're uh, Let's say from a realistic scenario, uh, if your application is uh, uh, you know working fine for 100 users, when you are trying to load up for 150 users, if your uh, application started, if your application transaction started failing, or uh, you know um, uh, if your uh, transaction is started failing, then uh, you know the application is not stable enough. There is some uh, uh, some. Uh, Fix that means that is required. So to keep that in track, we used to track the error rate uh, and uh, throughput. Um, so on a particular uh, a particular point in time, how many requests is your user is able to load? So that uh, that puts in your uh, user perspective as well. Like uh, how many users are in the system? Like with this many users, I I can expect this many number of requests per second. So, uh, so we have these uh, three particular goals. So, with this user journey and this performance goals, we'll try to see uh, the similar demo for that. And uh, yeah. Um, so here, right uh, here, I've created. Uh, we have created a player use case. So here, if you see uh, the headers, like header protocols and stuff, are already uh, defined in the base simulation. So we are directly defining our scenarios. So if you see this, this is one particular function which have which has player full flow. So the scenario is play user journey, and uh, it will repeat for thirty seconds. So according to that criteria, so we have mentioned it like um, if a user starts doing it, do it for thirty seconds, even if it completes in one second or less than two seconds, just try to repeat the same transaction again and again for thirty seconds. And um, you know this is particular. Uh, the, this is one HTTP header which says execute and since uh, uh, it will try to uh, uh, try to put in a post request uh, like with player so that it will try to create a um, uh, create a user like I showed in the postman. Uh, so for for that uh, what we did is we reuse the same headers again so from the base class and uh, 
you know um and the body right uh, if you remember in the postman i tried to uh, create a player with a with this body so what we have done is we have put in the body like uh, in automation you used to have a separate uh, classes or csv files or json files uh, to have a data report right so likewise you can uh, likewise we have mentioned as a the payload should be from from this particular json file so that uh, you know you can modify it or uh, you know you can uh, uh, you can uh, uh, add uh, multiple uh, multiple files based on your requirement so for now we have just made a very simple uh, json file that has a basic payload so this http request uh, will uh, uh, will consider this body uh, will consider that this payload is uh, needs to be sent with that uh, uh with the http request as a body uh so the next thing is once the http request is uh, you know sent successfully uh, it will try to uh, it will try to uh, you know check for uh, the response code so it is kind of assertion that we do in automation so uh, let's say uh, i'm expecting once the http request is sent i'm expecting a 201 uh, success code but if it is say if it sends 404 or some other uh, http request uh, it will consider it as a fail so that you can identify it from each and uh, you, you know you can keep track of the failures from from each and every point uh, from every different perspectives and uh, the same thing is uh, the next thing uh, which i'm doing is uh, if you see this uh, we are trying to uh, extract a id from the json response and uh, save it in the user id so this that is what this particular uh, uh, this particular line is doing so which is called as correlation uh, so as i showed in the application right uh here once you create a application once you create a user it will try to generate a user id so you're going to use that particular user id for each and for the next transaction for that particular user like let's say get uh, user details or uh, update user details or delete user details you you want to need that uh, id uh the uniquely generated id so for uh, in a script perspective right uh once it is uh, running as a user scenario you need to for a uh, you need to tell the next request that uh, okay we need to hit this particular user for getting the user details you need to have this particular user id so that is the reason we are trying to save that user id and pass it to the next uh, request so if you see the next request right this is to view the user details uh, so here if you see it is a get type request uh, this is a post type request and this is a get type request you can define what type of request it is uh, and um, you know here i just directly uh, use that user id so that what will happen is if uh, suppose let's say scala is trying to uh, generate 30 different users uh, so each and every users will have their own session so that session will hold to that particular uh, particular user id so that it will be reused for the our next transaction like player get player update player and delete player so that is the main person uh, that is the main uh, objective of this and uh, here also we have reused the same header and uh, you know added a uh, assertion uh, so uh, the next thing is you can add uh, separate headers as well um, uh, like adding to your common headers right let's say you have a common headers and if you need to add some uh, particular header related to that particular request you can add it uh, you can just mention directly in this in here like if you see this it inherits the common headers as well and also additionally it has this it has uh, it's saying that uh, my content type is uh, application slash json type okay so uh, and also uh, here if you see this uh, the first when you are trying to create a user the status code we are expecting is 301 201 and here if you see uh, the status code we are looking for is 200 so that um, you know you you will exactly know uh, how your uh, each and every transaction or each and every uh, virtual user whatever the virtual user is doing is right so the same for http uh, uh same for delete as well so this gives a overview of like uh, you know how to do uh, how to you know handle correlation or uh, and uh, adding or adding assertions and uh, uh, you know using your uh, you know uh, fetch a different payloads uh, from a different uh, json files and uh, so that is uh, before uh, moving on to the scenarios right i'll just quickly show you uh, the modulation stuff right uh, so uh, here what we have done is we have just rewrote uh, different uh, rewrote the same scenario but in a different uh, uh, 
in a different approach. So here, each and everything is a separate function, like create player, uh, find player, update player, delete player. So here you can, uh, what you can do is, uh, the create player is similar, uh, but what you have done is for update player, right? Uh, so for update player, uh, it will not depend on that, uh, uh, the same scenario, but what will happen is, uh, update player will be uh, running as a separate uh, function itself. So what it will do is, it will try to call the create player function and, uh, um, you know, create its own user for updating that. And the same for delete player. So each and every, uh, so both of the, both the things will be considered as a different uh, uh, transactions or different users. Uh, but what they what it will do is it will try to uh, reuse the same create player function so that uh, you know you can reuse your functions multiple times. So, so uh, it avoid it helps in a lot of uh, 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 you know it it helps in keeping your uh, code reusable as much as possible. You don't need to. Uh, uh, redo it or copy it each and every time you need to apply it for the particular function. And uh, coming back to the same uh, same user flow, right? So there we have mentioned as uh, you know uh, I need to have thirty users at uh, at same time for uh, you know thirty seconds. So what we have done is um, this is the load pattern. So here we have mentioned that. Uh, the player flow. So this is this is the function that we are uh, supposed to run, and uh, it will inject. Uh, so inject at once is uh, something like uh, it will say, okay, uh, you need to create thirty different users, uh, or you need to there. There should be thirty different virtual users need to start the transaction, and uh, uh, so it will start at a time. Uh, thirty use thirty different user will start performing the particular action, and uh, it follows this HTTP protocol, which is defined in the base class, and. Uh, uh, and also there is global assertions like say, uh, you know, the failed test case here, we have mentioned as the failed request, right? Even if uh, it shouldn't have uh, any failed assertions, like the failed, failed test case should be zero. Uh, what you can do is based on your percentage, uh, error rate percentage, right? You can mention, okay, the count should be less than uh, this many numbers or greater than this numbers. So you can have a global assertion so that, uh, you know, it will be considered as a whole for your test suit. Uh, let's say you are running, uh, you know, three or three or four different user scenarios for, uh, let's say, two one two thousand users at particular point in time. You don't, uh, you can have a, uh, you know, global uh, uh, global weight for your performance test. So when you are running it in your, uh, uh, you know, pipelines or stuff like that, right? Uh, you can just quickly see your basic uh, global uh, or uh, high level uh, summary of your uh, report. Let's say, okay, uh, all my requests got. Uh, request a success and uh, the response time is less than as overall the response time average is uh, less than 1000 and uh, uh, you know the request per second got triggered is greater than 20 seconds so you can have a global assertion which will uh, you know help which will be very helpful when you are having it in pipeline you don't need to uh, uh, you don't need to dig into your report every day to have a uh, to understand your uh, your performance report for uh, until or unless there is a errors or failures uh, so that, that is one additional advantage. So so here, what we have done is, uh, you know, the failed count should be zero. And uh, uh, and also we have mentioned that particular get player request, right? This particular request should have uh, should have response time mean of uh, 1000 seconds, less than 1000 seconds. So you can have, uh, you can point it to a particular request or you can uh, ask like in the second transaction, right? Uh, in global, like as a overall, there shouldn't be any HTTP request which should be greater than, it should be less than uh, uh, two, uh, two uh, less than two seconds, which is like here it is mentioned as a millisecond. And um, the next thing is uh, the number of requests per count, which throughput actually you're trying to see. So here you are saying that my throughput should be less than, uh, should be greater than 20 seconds. So, uh, so th this is a basic user flow that we are trying to, you know, uh, simulate from here. Let's uh, let's try to run this. So here you can directly run it from your IDE or, uh, you know, whether you're running it in the, from a huge load, right? You can directly run it from your command prompt. Like it's supposed, uh, it's supposed to come running it from the command line so that uh, you don't need to have your IDE open, which will consume a lot of uh, uh, your uh, resources, right? Uh, so you can uh, directly run it. And also you can run through Maven uh, like this, uh, so this is the basic Maven command uh, for run your uh, Gatling script. Uh, so where you have mentioned, uh, you know, Gatling test and you need to specify your uh, package, like with the simulation class, you need to mention the simulation class where, where it is. So here I will mention this, this script, uh, which is uh, 
here this package and uh, say that you can mention particular things. So for this run, right, I'll just try to run it directly from your ID, from my ID. So when I try to run this, right, it will, uh, what uh, Gatling will try to do is, it will try to find each and every simulations that is present inside the package. So here in my package, I have, uh, I have a lot of uh, uh, examples uh, present over here. So in that, I'm trying to run uh, a particular class that is inside that demo, okay? Uh, inside the demo package and uh, uh, player use case. So if you see this, uh, it is mentioned here as three. So what I can do is I can directly punch in as three and uh, enter, and you can provide uh, um, uh, provide your description about your uh, test. So once it is done, right, it will start your simulation. So this will run for 30 seconds. It will try to run for 30 seconds to uh, hold your, uh, uh, to hold, uh, to uh, match your exact uh, simulation scenario. Uh, and, um, you know, uh, Gatling in particular, what it will do is it will try to give you a summary of your test, like kind of live monitoring um, in your command prompt itself. You can uh, configure it as much as you want, you know, like here in Gatling config file. Uh, so in command prompt itself, you can see uh, how many number of uh, requests is getting created, uh, each and every transaction, how it is performing, and uh, is there any failures, stuff like that. Uh, so here, if you see this, right, as an overall, it says uh, create a uh, create a player request got generated 99 times, get player 30 times, and uh, uh, updated player 30 times. So uh, all the requests are successful. If it is failure, it will uh, put it under KO. And, uh, yeah, and it, it's, it constantly shows how many number of active users were there. And uh, yeah, uh, once the test is done, right, uh, it will, uh, the Gatling itself, uh, the Gatling will try to show you a high level uh, summary itself in the command prompt, in command prompt. So in the terminal itself, if you can see this, uh, how many number of request count got generated, total 844, what is your minimum response time, max response time, uh, what is your uh, average of it, what is your devi deviation and, uh, um, and other uh, performance related uh, stats, which will be helpful. And also it will give you a time distribution, like how many number of requests were, uh, uh, were under less than 800 milliseconds. You can define this particular scope so that, uh, you know, uh, you don't need to dig deep uh, into your performance report each and every time. Uh, you can just uh, uh, see a very high level summary based on this itself. And also it gives you a, a clear HTML report. Uh, let me try to open that HTML report. Um, uh, so this is how uh, Gatling will show you a basic HTML report. So the global will have each and every details uh, specific to the overall test. So if you see this right here, uh, how many number of count, how many number of cases were failed? So which I mentioned as zero. So there was nothing, nothing failed over there. So it uh, stick to the code of uh, okay and uh, response times. Uh, you know, particular to uh, overall response time and particular request and you know your overall average. So every everything. So this is kind of a successful flow, but uh, when there is something dropping greater than or less than two seconds, it will start showing in a global response itself saying this is failed. So that, uh, you know, uh, when it is, you, you can just uh, get a quick glimpse from the overall scenario itself. And uh, it have a very detailed uh, flow as well, like if particular to each and every request, what's your, uh, 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 what's your uh, entries for uh, like maximum response times, everything like shown in the summary itself. And also this will have, uh, you know, number of requests got triggered. Uh, what is the constant user which, uh, uh, which was uh, maintained. So each and everything will be there. And also it can be very specific to your particular request itself. Uh, like the same scenarios, like you can mention it, like how it is for get player, how it is for update player, uh, how many number of requests got triggered. So each and every details, you can dig deep into this uh, particular report. And, uh, and uh, so uh, with that, right, uh, So with that, right, um, in your terminal also, it will show you the global uh, assertions as well. Like they, there are four global assertions. It is saying whether it is true or false, like in report. So these are the key things, um, you know, with uh, Gatling. So uh, as an overall, as a overall, right. Uh, so with this type of approach, it will be very similar to your automation script so that, uh, you know, keep it, you can keep it very, 
uh, uh, very progressive from the early stage of uh, testing and also uh, you can keep your uh, uh, load uh, or uh, you don't need to run your full load as a with the full user capacity you can try to uh, do it with a very minimal capacity so that you know uh, you know the pulse of your uh, application from the early st stage of time uh, so that 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 would be the high advantage of it so that you know your application will be uh, your application will be very uh, optimized from the early stage, from a very early stage in time. So that is all we have. Uh, is there any questions and answers that we can? Yeah. Um, so to Uma's question, uh, can you please give me two more advantages for using Gatling? I'm practicing in Postman for automating. Will help me to explore more on it. Uh, one here, the idea here is to uh, write performance tests code. So uh, choosing the tool like uh, Catlin or Locust or K6 depends upon your requirement. If you, for, uh, for in terms of Gatling, Gatling used to support uh, more number of concurrent users, which, uh, which, is, which consumes less memory and uh, less CPU when compared to other tools. Again, it depends upon uh, your requirement. Uh, we can you can choose the tool. The idea here is to uh, treat performance testing also as a code and running your uh, uh, CE pipelines to identify the bottlenecks in an earlier stage. And uh, one more question uh, from Tripathi. Any tool supports uh, simulation of the scenarios like high CPU usage, low memory and execute performance tests? In fact, uh, you can simulate uh, you can simulate the behavior with any tool. Uh, even from JMeter, you can have a, a good amount of users and simulate the high number of CPU utilization and memory things. It all uh, you can simulate this from any tool basically. Uh, you need to monitor from your server end to see how much the CPU utilization is going and the memory is going. Uh, to Bharat. Question, how can I run same use case with different user loads and generate report with uh, combination between different loads? Yeah, you can do it. Uh, if you, uh, Abdul, can you go to the script? Yeah. So let's just show you. Again, the different screen. tools uh, has, a, uh, has a different approach for this. If you see in Gatling, uh, here we have injected uh, using uh, advanced user. So it basically it will inject uh, 10 users. There are other functions like uh, uh, increase uh, concurrent users to from uh, zero to hundred. Uh, there are a lot of uh, options available in uh, Catlin. Using that, you can simulate your user load. So you can say, uh, I need uh, uh, concurrent users of 200 for uh, next 10 minutes, and then uh, ramp users from zero to hundred and hold the load for uh, 10 minutes, then ramp down to 10 users per second and hold it for uh, 15 minutes. You can uh, do all those uh, uh, load patterns using Gatling. Yeah. So Kaushik Ramachandran, uh, when it comes to application performance, my perspective, uh, choosing the right service will also play a major role. Do you see any improvement in performance phase when a web API is built using GraphQL? Yeah, choosing the right tool, uh, as Logesh mentioned, uh, it, it will help a lot. But again, how you are going to implement the tool, it also matters. But uh, from our perspective, uh, we use performance testing tool to test the behavior whatever uh, build. GraphQL and all those uh, technologies, again, it depends upon your, uh, your requirement and how the user is going to use the system. All these factors will come into picture. And Pallavi's question, uh, if I want to integrate performance tool with Selenium automation, then which tool is best? I use PyCharm and Eclipse for Selenium. Uh, Selenium is uh, meant for a different purpose. Uh, it is uh, used for functional testing in uh, more of like, uh, but I, I'm not sure how much you can scale using Selenium. Uh, it is uh, 
mainly built for uh, uh, testing uh, applications in uh, UI point of view. But performance testing tools architecture is different. They use to uh, they their architecture is uh, built on uh, to simulate more number of concurrent users. And uh, nowadays uh, there are a lot of tools like Flutterivo and um, Karate, which accepts uh, Selenium scripts and uh, convert it into uh, performance test scripts. The output will be JMeter scripts or uh, Gatling script, and you can run it um, in any cloud or uh, any distributed environment. And also with Selenium, uh, I'm not sure how much distributed load uh, you can simulate. But uh, using these performance uh, testing tools uh, like Gatling, JMeter, and all, you can do distributed uh, load testing. Uh, also, uh, uh, long back, right? So we used page load time for measuring uh, pages performance back then, right? So that was a before all this Gatling and uh, you know K6, low, uh, low cost, etc. came into the market. Uh, long back, uh, we were using for for some places we were using Selenium, and uh, and uh, we were taking the page load time as a parameter to uh, you know. Uh, uh, to gauge the 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 performance so we had uh, uh, so for like for the distributed uh, network we had uh, uh, like for the distributed uh, access we we were doing grid and uh, we were doing even doing cross browser to make that uh, for distributed loads and stuffs but uh, that was very primitive and it was not uh, what we wanted but back then when there were not much options for uh, performance testing and everything was paid we were using this, but Selenium, like uh, Ram said, it's more of a uh, front-end thing, and uh, uh, you know, uh, doing performance on that level may not need, may not be uh, what the clients are, uh, you know, what we want. Yeah. We'll take one last question, maybe because we are right on time. Uh, if any, yeah. Sure, I think, uh, yeah, there is one. Performance testing should be for back end or front end. Uh, it can be both. Uh, when it comes to API, we can call it as a backend uh, performance system. So, front end side, uh, there are some tools uh, like uh, even uh, Chrome Dev Tools support uh, uh, measuring the client side uh, rendering as well. Yeah, so this is where the client side and the server side, the performance testing comes into picture. Cool then, thank you folks. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for it. Thanks to everyone. And thanks, uh, thanks Raman. Thank you.